Thank you so much, Aisha. And uh, let's get straight to our guest. I'm joined now by emerging market economist from Nomura, Peter Atard Montalto, usually based in, in London, but often traveling here. And, and what we can get from you, I hope, Peter, is a, a perspective, the investor uh, perspective, looking in on, on Africa from, from mm. outside. Let's start with an overall view, because most of the people I've spoken to are part of um, this event, want Africa to, to look good. So, so they're saying, let's be hopeful. Mm. Um, how are you feeling? Optimistic, pessimistic? Well, it's great to be here back in Cape Town, even though the weather's not great. But uh, I think, as you say, there's a lot of marketing that goes on around these events. But actually, the interesting thing versus, say, when we were here two years ago, is that marketing has turned into some real competition between countries. And two years ago, it was all about the sort of South Africa hub model. You sort of come into Africa via South Africa. Uh, I was always skeptical then, um, but the government here was pushing it a lot. Uh, but I think that model, uh, that view has actually died now. There's a huge amount of competition with South Africa, not helped by the energy crisis here, but also by so many opportunities elsewhere, whether it's uh, renewable energy, which is spread a lot more so rapidly in the last two years, manufacturing, etc., where people are much more willing to take risks now, I think, to go directly into countries without going via South Africa. Um, so there's a real sense of healthy competition, if you like, where South Africa doesn't necessarily come out that well from that, actually. Um, but about these hubs in, in different parts of the region, these well, three well, regions. Let me stop you there, because uh, maybe... Because of that competition, South Africa is really pushing the point that we are open for business, um, trying to harness this opportunity with everybody here, uh, regional trade, a huge opportunity for mm. South Africans. It comes, though, after um, xenophobic attacks, after concerns about uh, visa regulations. Uh, you've looked at the energy crisis in, in South Africa. Is that message getting through? Well, the message the government's really trying to sell, and with all the engagements with ministers and stuff, the strong message is, you know, give us sort of uh, consideration for the apartheid past and where South Africa is coming from. Uh, and uh, you like, give a little bit of slack to South Africa. I think that's totally the wrong way of selling the message, to be honest. You know, investors are not going to see South Africa as a charity case because of history. People want to say, where is the government now? What direction are they facing in given the past? Um, and that's where the real judgment actually comes from, where the serious questions have to be asked about investor-friendly policies, um, etc. And that's where I think the government has, uh, has fallen down a little bit here, and where other governments are a lot more aggressive in saying, you know, they've all, like Kenya, for instance, uh, pushing a much more free market model. Um, you know, somewhere like Ghana, you know, saying uh, on the other side of Africa, saying, you know, we have access to this big region to Nigeria, but ease of doing business is much better than say going into mm -hmm. Nigeria. Other people have much more compelling current stories without trying to sort of map this historical context that South Africa does. That, that is very interesting. Our investors starting to see these very distinct uh, regions in Africa. Of course, it's too big to, to say Africa. Are, are they starting to, to pick regions and say we, we will avoid there, but we will still play on the continent, we'll just confine mm. to, to that region and looking at the different fortunes of the regions? Well, that's certainly the case for manufacturing, where I think it is possible to, uh, to treat the regions very separately and to choose particularly good countries um, where you want to set up manufacturing bases, etc. And the big thing now at the moment is in West Africa for car manufacturing, where there's a big expansion, it's a large population area of the world that did have actually no car manufacturing and that's now changing around. Um, you can't export cars easily from South Africa to Nigeria, for instance. Um, so that's a classic example where people are going in directly, actually. Um, but the key thing to leverage this more, which I think uh, there's a lot of skepticism here about, is linking these three regions up. And uh, there's been so much talk um, about this over, over history, over two years ago here, and then two years before that, everyone sort of talks about tariff and non-tariff trade barriers breaking these things down. Regional integration. Exactly, but it's all talk and not much of it has happened. Um, and there's a, a huge amount of money for it, infrastructure. Isn't I spoke to uh, basically the equivalent of our Reserve Bank governor yeah. from Rwanda. He says there's absolutely in East Africa free movement of, of goods, people, um, and it's yielding dividends. Like, exactly, like it within the regions, but connecting yeah. the regions up. There's, I think there's no political will at the moment for free movement of people between the regions. Um, there's so much infrastructure that's needed. Remember, just like in South Africa, but in Africa more generally, it's all about extractive industries, you know, all, all roads lead to the sea, that sort of argument. You know, roads between countries that need to be upgraded, etc. There's a huge project that needs to be undertaken. Um, I still feel like we're quite a way off um, that kind of project coming to fruition, which will be really needed to give Africa growth um, mm. a big leg up, or at least maintaining it at current levels for the next decade or so. 
final question because we're running out of time. Um, but I went to a session about capital markets. Africa needs access to funds, especially for infrastructure. People are talking about this uh, gap, I think 20 billion a year. I'm not sure mm. of the, the figure right now. Uh, but how do we access that cash? I mean, South Africa announcing a few days ago that we're going to have to pull back on infrastructure spend, which, which is the last thing that we need if, mm. if you listen to the talk here, that that is crucial. Exactly. Well, I think we need a washout of investors in some sense. First of all, there's a lot of tourists here, people who bought external debt in one country because it was in Africa, even though it might have a completely different story. Mm. And it's the same on the private equity side. I think once you have a washout, maybe through the Fed tightening later this year, we can see some cleaner sort of stories come through, cleaner investment balance sheets that can be put to work. I think the worry story that for me that came from South Africa for instance here at the meetings is now saying oh look at all these new sort of Asian investment banks uh, development banks uh, BRICS development banks so we can use them for sources of capital and that worries Western investors a lot because we know with the World Bank for instance you get a lot of conditionality which is very strict but necessary for reforming institutions you know keeping your budget on track etc so I think that's going to be the real thing around infrastructure to watch is how much is sacrificed in terms of political conditionality you know promises to China put very bluntly um, that comes through from that um, because private uh, capital markets are only going to be uh, a slow um, sort of source of capital really in the coming years because so much competition for so few dollars. Okay, so basically be careful about who you accept mm. money from. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Peter Atard Montalto from Nomura, usually based in London. And that's a wrap for now from the World Economic Forum, but I will be back with you uh, live in Business Review at 6 o'clock. We'll be speaking to the IDC and hearing from that governor from Rwanda.